At least Deb's got some outs. <laughs> Good job, she's muted. I said my supply is dwindling. Oh. Okay, it's uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, yeah, are we uh, one of them? go? Yes. Okay. All right, welcome to uh, town council meeting. Monday, December the 7th. We, uh, I'm going to read a few notices first. Due to efforts to contain the spread of COVID-19 and to protect all individuals, the council chambers of town hall will not be open to the public to attend council meetings until further notice. Members of the public who have an interest in a matter listed on the agenda may, up until 10 a.m. on the day of the scheduled council meeting, email councilagenda at oracle.ca, indicating your request to speak to a matter listed on the agenda. A phone number and conference ID code will be provided to you so that you may join the virtual meeting and provide your comments to council. Members of the public wishing to raise a question during the public question period of the council meeting may be may beginning at 8.30 p.m. on the evening of the council meeting call 1-289-801-5774, conference ID 733-679-271, pound sign. Correspondence and emails submitted will be considered as public information and entered into the public record. If you require actual information in an alternate format, please contact the clerk's division by phone at 519-941-0440, extension 2256, or via email at clerksdepartment at orangeville.ca. We are now going to have the singing of our national anthem, Mr. Granato. Go. Oh, Canada, a home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. With glowing hearts, we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you, David Nair and Peter Orangel for that nice rendition and a reminder of what a great country we live in. Thank you, David. We would like to acknowledge the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe people, including the Ojibwe, Potawatomi, and Odawa of the Three Fires Confederacy. This meeting is being aired on public television and are streamed live and may be taped for later public broadcast or webcast. Your name is part of the public record and will be included in the minutes of this meeting. Earlier tonight, we had a closed session of council and we are reporting that we are receiving a report from CAO Ed Brennan uh, that was uh, received by council during the closed meeting. Uh, could I could I have a motion to uh, adopt the minutes of pre... We don't have an ink tonight. No, we just need to motion for the receipt of Ed's report. All right, I need a motion for receipt of Mr. Brennan's report. Uh, Councillor Sherwood, seconded by Councillor Andrews. All in favor? Yes. Councillors? All right, we're going to move right on to tonight's uh, order of business, and that is a staff report by Mr. Brennan, 12.1. Uh, I'm just going to read this prior to Mr. Brennan starting. Whereas the town's procedural bylaw provides for less formal procedures for special and standing committee, of council and whereas town council wishes to conduct a council workshop utilizing less formal procedures to facilitate discussion regarding the strategic priorities now therefore be resolved 
the council convened into a council workshop to discuss its strategic priorities. We need a motion for that. Can we have a motion for that, folks? Councilor Post, seconded by Deputy Mayor McIntosh. All in favor? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Brennan, over to you, sir. Thank you, Your Worship. I will attempt to share my screen and hopefully all goes well. Worship, are you able to see the screen? Yes. Yes, okay. I'm just now to go to slide presentation mode and hopefully I'm in slide presentation mode with all of, uh, for council. Uh, your worship members, councillors, thank you very much. Tonight, uh, I have a, there's a very lengthy uh, presentation. Uh, I will use myself and uh, the general managers to, to go through some of the slides. Some is a recap of this past year. The intent is to look at the priorities that were set by council and our strategic plan where we are at in that. We will review some of the workload uh, of many of our staff has taken uh, part over the last year, and particularly that of COVID uh, and the impact it's had on us. From there, we will look forward into 2021 20, uh, and 22, so that council can have a look at the priorities and uh, the objectives that they want to set for, for staff and where they want to go over that time. So, if you would bear with me, uh, as a quick recap, council uh, planning session was held back in uh, September uh, 6th in 2019. Council was consulted, you had your priorities. We uh, listed off the priorities and we came up with what council uh, needed going forward. We looked at the strategic plan, we looked at the other impacts of many of the plans and stuff that we've had, the approval of plans and strategies, the multi-year business, a roadmap for the day-to-day -day operations of the corporation and what that looked like. We looked at the workforce and what we needed uh, in the forms of a workforce and workforce uh, development in order to deliver on the requirements of our organizations. We always talked about effective and efficient uh, operations. And again, these were main areas of Orangeville Forward. Your Worship, uh, just so that I can confirm, are you seeing this in slide presentation mode in, uh, on your screens? Not? Uh, I think you can put it in full screen mode. No, it's not. It's not in full screen mode. We're seeing the uh, sidebar with the okay. various pages there. I just had F5, but that's not working either. You're sharing the wrong desktop screen. Sorry, you're sharing the wrong screen apparently. Yeah, go. How sure. does it look? That's that's full screen, Mr. Brennan. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Worship. And I'm just trying to get back into here so that I can see council, but uh, that's not allowing me to do it either. I will move forward to your worship, and if there's anything, uh, Andrea, yeah. is there a way of getting this screen back? So you can see the paperwork if you want to try and minimizing that. Sorry, minimize. Okay. There you go. Thank you, your worship, for your uh, <coughs> just a little just a little technical difficulties here. Mm -hmm. So again, we talked about. Orangeville's strategic plan, or it was a strategic action plan for 2017 to 22, supported by a number of approved plans and strategies. And progress uh, update was provided to council back in 2020. I think it was March of 2020 uh, of our accomplishments to date. We talked about the drivers in our organization and our corporation of the mandatory requirements, our strategic priorities, the core services, and sometimes we forget that on top of strategic priorities, the day-to-day -day operation that it takes to keep an operation of this size going, be it from road maintenance to water, wastewater, to payroll, to HR services, recreation, 
all of the types of things that takes the day-to-day -day operation. The level of service and enhanced service throughout our corporation. We talked about performance measurements and reporting. The efficiencies of, of our operations, taking care of the taxpayer's money. And again, we tie all this in to multi-year uh, budgets and annual budgets. We talked about core operations and the day-to-day -day services, and those are we really looking at from a one to two a year span. The Mandatory requirements are strategic priorities, the core services, and sometimes we forget that on top of strategic priorities, the day-to-day -day operation. It appears that I'm getting some feedback or delayed response here, so I'm going to go forward. Uh, zero to five years, we looked at intermediate horizon, the, the strategic and the near term priorities. And then again, the long term priorities of five to 20 years. And again, all of this is balancing operations with the long term objectives of Council. In 2020, the world changed. We have a thing called COVID and it had an immense impact on our operations, on our town and of course on everyone worldwide. Reviewing the council priorities for, for uh, 2021 to 2022. Again, as a recap, how were the priorities identified in 2020? Council had a strategic planning session. They presented uh, a prioritized list. Council to think about the priorities and if they still resonate. So what we're asking Council to do is to look back at our strategic plan and Council's priorities that they set in 2019. Do they still resonate? Is there a must do item that should be raised now? And how do we achieve it? We looked at things of uh, with council's priorities and we tied them to our strategic plan. The municipal services in our strategic plan shows that the town services will be citizen focused and delivered professionally to ensure quality that meets the needs of our community. The common teams from, uh, from the council's priorities was to enhance online services, digital services and customer services. Focus on efficiencies recreation programs and services. We talked about strong governance from our strategic priorities and the common themes that came out, financial asset management and sustainability, budget planning taxations, balance control taxes for the community needs, understand the future requirements and plan accordingly, understand the reserve requirements and manage debt, we talked about communications and online services, enhanced digital online services, mobile and web, increased communica uh, communications, external and internal, and increased community engagement. And Council talked about the delivery model for policing railway to list a few. Economic vitality from our strategic priorities, and Council's common themes that came out of it to attract and retain businesses, to increase tourism, implementation of a cultural plan, and downtown revitalization. Community stewardship. We talked about our community will embrace our heritage and will be an accessible, inclusive place where residents feel safe, engaged, and involved. Common themes that came out of your priorities, safe and healthy community and neighborhoods, welcoming, inclusive and accessible community, community safety and well-being. We talked about sustainable infrastructure and maintaining, managing town assets. Again, what came out of your priorities, sustainable asset management, sustainability initiatives. Council's priorities were broken down into a, uh, a number of areas. And this again will just serve as a refresher to Council. I know you're all aware of the priorities you selected and you asked us to focus on. Top priorities, which again, if you break down the percentage of votes, 
The top five priorities, which received seven or more votes, was the financial asset management and sustainability, budget planning and taxation, enhanced communications, engagement, customer service and online digital services. Report a problem as an example. Safe and healthy community and neighborhoods. Medium priorities, those that got three to six votes, would include sustainable initiatives, increased tourism, continue to Im implement cultural plan, recreation pl uh, program review, welcoming inclusive and accessible community and attract and retain businesses and investments. And those of a low vote, which received a zero to two votes would be the focus on efficiencies, rank balloting and delivery model reevaluation. And again, as I said before, uh, from a focus on efficiencies, town staff and I know council will always focus on efficiencies as a common trend as we operate day to day. So now we will look at progress in 2020 for corporate initiatives. If we look at some of this uh, strategic plan progress, as council saw a detailed report in uh, March of 2020, we talk about the OBP. The OBP has taken a uh, transition, has taken a, uh, a lot of work from the OCPC brief, the OPS collective agreements and negotiations and arbitration, staff transition, the upgrades and the renovations at the uh, police facility, asset identification and disposal, records management and OPP launch. It has taken a lot of work and a lot of internal effort uh, to, to uh, get to where we are today, where the OPP are now policing our community. I will now pass it over to uh, General Manager of Infrastructure Services, Mr. Jones, if you could uh, go through uh, a couple of these slides, please. Thanks, Mr. Brennan. Um, as Ed has noted, uh, much work has been accomplished in 2020, notwithstanding the challenges imposed upon us by the pandemic. This slide shows some of the more significant projects that have been undertaken by infrastructure services staff. I won't speak to each of them, just briefly uh, mention a couple. Um, from a transit perspective, the year began with us working with the task force. And as you know, we continue to work to try to implement the recommendations of the transit optimization study. Uh, there was a full slate of road work that was completed during 2020, including the reconstructions of both Little York Street and uh, the southernmost section of Faulkner Street, and a considerable amount of repaving, including the north end of First Street. Uh, there's a number of projects that we have initiated and we are moving forward with the design work on um, in preparation for the 2021 construction season including Centennial Road reconstruction, the Broadway Boulevard bricks, and the Hanson Boulevard bridge over Lower Menorah Creek. Next slide, please. Um, early in 2020, Council approved an update to the water and wastewater rate study, thereby setting the rate structure for water and wastewater through the end of 2024. Uh, a significant construction project has been underway to replace the roof of digester number one at the water pollution control plant. And we are, uh, we've, we've tested that out and we are now bringing that digester back into service. Uh, the consulting work is also underway for the rehabilitation of the standpipe and the West Sector Reservoir, which is a major undertaking that will be ongoing for the next couple of years. Infrastructure services is also wrapping up the work on the class environmental assessment for the connection of the pull and well to the town's water distribution system. Next slide, please. And with that, I will pass it to Mr. Osmond. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Good evening, Council. Uh, I'll try to keep this brief as well. Uh, I won't go through 35 uh, projects that were uh, administered in 2020. Some of the highlights again, uh, Irvy Curry Park, every kid's park playground, a splash pad, huge, uh, huge success uh, in 2020, even with even with COVID, COVID got a launch. The Broadway media and landscape and lighting upgrades were done. The police station renovation, as uh, Mr. Brennan alluded to, major project and uh, up and running. The Gene Amman daycare rentals and the YMCA contract that went with that building uh, was uh, is, is up and running and, and, and doing well. 
Of course, the building you're sitting in or the building we're all going to from day to day in the town hall has been seen a nice renovation with all the windows. And uh, I got to say, the, uh, the heritage look is maintained. Uh, from a uh, sustainability perspective and energy conservation perspective, we up upgraded the, the common areas in Tony Rose, the LED lights. Diane Drive seen a bunch of uh, three or four different uh, rentals to uh, bring the building up to, uh, to a standard that uh, gets well used. The OSPCA roof, of course, we, uh, we've done it with a metal uh, roof and uh, should be there for a long, long time. And we also did a major upgrade in the HVAC system in that building. Uh, we did a whole bunch of RFPs and RFSOs uh, throughout the year. One in particular was the after hour answering calls and alarm system uh, that we took over from OPS. The Alder Recreation Center, there was a huge HVAC uh, replacement. The trail aid signage is now in place in, uh, in, our, in our two or three of our, our parks to show people where they're going. And the fire dispatch, of course, was a huge uh, piece for us uh, in terms of the uh, transfer to Tilsonburg. And uh, again, uh, was uh, a great savings in terms of our budgeting. Next slide. Economic development, quite busy uh, in uh, 2020 uh, with the tourism strategy, which is almost wrapping up. The final version is in front of us now. We're just doing a final review before it goes to council. We'll probably bring it in in January. Uh, we did the addition of eight public art pieces uh, in uh, in 2020. Uh, there's a new four season visitor guide done in conjunction with our uh, theater partners. Uh, Digital Main Street program uh, completed the first launch, the second program uh, with to provide a BIA and all the business with support. And again, the digitization, and we, we got funding in amount of $40,000 for that to support that cause. Uh, feasibility assessment for the redevelopment 82 and 90 Broadway, of course, which is ongoing, but the initial startup and initial project is complete, and the consultant report was uh, quite, quite uh, extensive and well done. Uh, we did uh, a lot of workshops uh, for the economic development breakfast, uh, worked out really well. Uh, staff coordinated negotiated a film shoot and we did a Christmas movie uh, in the in the downtown area which is quite uh, quite exciting. Next slide. Uh, the the uh, fire master plan of course uh, is ongoing and we're we're really excited by the fact that we're now down to uh, roughly 40 that, that's remaining to be done or sorry, seven that's remain to be done. And uh, with the uh, construction or moving ahead with the new fire station, it'll pretty much wipe out most of the recommendations that were uh, coming out of the fire master plan. Next slide. In the library, of course, uh, we're, we're quite pleased with how the library move forward, particularly in the COVID. The uh, libraries uh, are, uh, were open early and uh, is being well sustained over the uh, over the the pandemic experience, we're all trying to, all trying to get through. Uh, we're getting a lot of successful uh, feedback and a lot of good positive uh, programs going ahead at the library. A lot of people going into the library, curb pickup, and a lot of things happening online. So uh, a lot of staff are working hard at the library and, and being very successful. Uh, we see a huge increase in our virtual online uh, registration, and we're also seeing a lot of activity from our staff that's running virtual story time and programming uh, and that kind of thing, which is uh, again uh, quite exciting for for the community. In recreation events, we uh, of course finished off the Recreation Parks Master Plan, which we're all going through now in terms of trying to implement over the next couple of years. And uh, that's a major document. And it'll, I'm sure it'll also uh, direct us in some things we can do in the uh, in the goals ahead. Uh, we also uh, reintroduced and relaunched uh, programs in aquatics and fitness. And of course, swim team and our, and our minor hockey and those kinds of groups are now on ice and that kind of thing. So that's all going well. Uh, the drive-in movie nights are quite exciting. I know the mayor was quite excited about it, enjoyed it. And I'm sure he, he probably like be, be like, like be up there right now watching a good movie and uh, and uh, in, in on the parking lot. The summer concert series, a huge success and something we're introducing and we're going to try to keep in our program going forward next year. And we, we've made that item, uh, put that item in our budget. The summer youth series uh, was again, uh, it, it, we had great numbers, uh, although it was a smaller program, it was quite successful. And uh, we're all enjoying now the lead up to Christmas and the holiday late extravaganza. And again, uh, a lot of work in a short time, but uh, quite successful, so quite pleased with it. Thank you. Over to Ms. Kenny, McKinney. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Robinson. So, I'm approaching 18. Are you getting an echo from me? Yes. Hmm. 
Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. OK, so I'm approaching the 18 month mark of the town of Orangeville, if you can believe it. And one of the priorities we had in our work plan for 2020 was to have corporate services shift to be an enterprise service enabler to bring together the vision that the CAO had set up previously. And I think that we've demonstrated that this year. Some of the pieces I'm going to talk about here and some of them will lead to where we align to council priorities. So we'll talk about communications a little later in the agenda. So over the past year, there's been a heavy focus on workplace workforce culture, including providing enterprise services both internally as well as across the corporation and offering new training as we look towards the future. The OPS OPP transition support, I would suggest, has touched every area of corporate services. We've had uh, the clerk's department and bylaw involved in enforcement, naturally. We have HR and finance who have involved in the majority of the transition in a lot of areas, communications regularly providing information to the community, and IT playing a lead role supporting Ray in the facility upgrades. We had a number of equity and diversity and inclusion initiatives, including working with Councillor Post on a public consultation and getting ready to launch the recently approved EDI committee. HR recently completed a wellness survey for staff to do a bit of a temperature check to see how people are doing. We recognize there's a lot going on and we got some feedback on where the stresses are coming from and where people may need more support. We also brought recently the International Association of Public Participation's Public Engagement Framework. And we also had a heavy emphasis this year on the launch of the Smart City and Digital First programs. So there will be a report coming to Council summarizing those activities. But some of the key highlights from that area include not just bringing the plan earlier in the year, but a delegation led by the mayor at AMO, where we talked to a number of about Orangeville as a center for innovation, recognizing that when you make investments in Orangeville, they're likely scalable across the province. We saw a $56 million investment from Whiteman in fiber, digital infrastructure, and we began a community pilot exploration for IoT or Internet of Things and sensor projects. And one of the other areas we're looking at is how can we partner to, to offset some of our capital expenses. Next slide, please. So this is an update from the uh, predominantly from the clerk's department. Records was an, was an identified area of priority as well. So there's been a lot of focus on first categorizing and then digitizing our records and bylaws. There's been some enhancements to our bylaw enforcement, which was approved by council as we're looking to expand that service as we've moved away from the OPS model to the OPP model and a number of automation that continues to happen in terms of moving the town forward in terms of agenda software and we'll be bringing uh, forward fairly soon closed captioning for video and council meetings with that new software as well as a number of new processes and online forms. Next slide. Back to you, Mr. Brennan. So thank you very much. And Council, as you can see, it's been a, a very busy time. And to carry on, uh, new initiatives and priorities that emerged in 2020. So COVID-19, uh, regularly review of public health directives. It took a lot of work and it's still ongoing. Uh, led to pandemic-based business continuity planning and recovery planning. Small pilot uh, to reopen community spaces, uh, safety, uh, people counters. We looked at uh, support rapid tr transition to digital, digitally in, uh, enabled workforces. So, you know, when COVID came in, we could not have people in our offices. Uh, certainly a, a much reduced number. So there was a lot of work that had to go into work from remote, uh, increased online services and facilitation of, of electronic meetings for council and committees. I think that we were probably one of the first municipalities in Ontario to have our uh, virtual council meeting. Uh, increased in uh, bylaw enforcement, uh, redeployment of community services staff uh, to, to help with indexing records and digitization of records, uh, establish modified process to continue services, uh, insurance of permits and licensing, and monitoring the expenses and uh, completing staff restart fund requirements, to name a few. Again, more uh, initiatives in responding to the COVID-19, uh, the recovery beanstalk, as you alluded to, and I'm just going to go back to Ms. Uh, McKinney right now because of uh, you can announce an award that we have here, Ms. McKinney, I think. Thank you, Mr. Brennan. So 
the town came together to do the, the planning that uh, the CAO just referenced and then we published that in a recovery document. That document was uh, very comprehensive. It had both an online presence and then it had a printable version. It was for, it, there were sections available for staff, for the community and for the business community. Now we took that information and we submitted submitted it to the, Ma I'm sorry, to Marcom, which is a international uh, competition for marketing and communications awards. And just today, we've received our gold statue for recognition in the strategic communications category. I don't know if you can see that, we can certainly, uh, the treasurer took some pictures, she can share them later for, for distribution and awareness. You asked us to enhance our communications and we, and we went global. Congratulations. Yeah, well, well done. Thank you. Great job, uh, Ms. McKinney and our communication staff by far. So uh, above and beyond the, the normal workload, uh, we, we must all realize that COVID made things longer to achieve and in a lot of cases became more expensive. We also dealt with uh, approximately 59 or 60 notices of motion of new businesses. 25 of those were COVID related. We came up with a new uh, public uh, engagement model. There was water bill adjustment policy, summer concert series, our Christmas or holiday lights uh, special, the drive-in movie nights, outdoor uh, boulevard cafes, our trans uh, transit transfer point safety study, and uh, the AI smart technology cameras in supporting reopening a long list of, of new things that were added to the list. Progress on council priorities. So here we will have a look and I'm going to get back to Ms. McKinney to look at the uh, financial asset manager, sustainability budgets and planning for the next couple slides. So this slide naturally belongs to the treasurer. So I will, uh, I'll start and if she wants to jump in, please, by all means. So in 2020, the treasurer came forward with an innovative solution to acquire a revolving line of credit, which is an atypical approach for some municipalities, but is getting noticed. We also had a focused emphasis on mitigating assessment based loss. So that means when people are challenging their, their, their assessment, there's an opportunity to go in front of a review board and so far, our Treasury Department has mitigated more than a billion dollars of worth of at-risk uh, assessment value. And that results in a $300,000 approximately in tax revenue or nearly 1% of the levy. In parallel, the Treasurer has taken a number of steps with her team to move the budget towards a more performance-based budget, which is in line with the CAO's longer-term vision and uh, has put together new templates and approaches in order to to change the way that we bring that forward. Nandini, please feel free to, to chime in if, I, if you feel like I'm not doing this justice. <laughs> uh, through your worship to GM McKinney, you're doing a wonderful job. Please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Asset management is a is a critical role for municipalities. Uh, most departments will have a hand in this. We have legislative requirements that are due by July of next year. So there's been a few things happening. We have our existing work that needs to be updated. The treasurer and the manager of IT have been working on an asset management RFP that would be enabling the town to acquire an end-to-end -end asset management system, which is something we have the funding for, but have not yet uh, acquired. So that has to go through an RFP process, as well as we've been in the process of onboarding a new specialist for asset management. And then I can see that Mr. Jones has included the road needs study condition assessment, which will provide input into the asset management plan. And in parallel, we've been working with a, a vendor to enable a digital version of that road needs study so that moving forward, we'll have a, a digital rendering that can also identify changes more frequently. Is there anything you'd like to add, Mr. Jones? No, I think you've got it covered. Okay, next slide. One of Council's top priorities for 2020 included enhancing communications, engagement, customer service, and online digital services and a slash reporter problem, and the website was clearly another key priority. 
So that was achieved in the fall of 2020. We have a new mobile app now with the report a problem pilot that we're in the process of implementing. One of the things I want you to think about when you think about the website is think about the website like a new smart TV. It can be much easier to use, but we need to make sure that we keep that content flowing and up to date or it will become stale. So it is an evolving process that we are anticipating will over, over time evolve actually into a citizen portal approach, which is something we can bring back in the future as well. We've also, we're almost complete in our human resources and payroll system procurement. This is a very uh, comprehensive procurement that will make a number of internal processes much easier. And uh, that's part of our digital transformation journey. Rapid mobile workforce deployment speaks to the speed with which IT and with some support from finance was very quickly to able to acquire the necessary laptops and technology needed to move the town's resources off site during the pandemic and then quickly pivoted to enabling virtual councils. Mr. Brennan referred to us being the first in the province for that and then we very quickly added on the opportunities for live delegations in those movie meetings. COVID screening app has come out recently. That's for staff before they come to work. They can fill out an assessment online and that gives us an opportunity to have a record in the event that there's anything, anything happens or anything goes wrong. We have an audit trail. We have the continued digitization and centralization of the town's records. We've, we've also got some work with the library happening, which is, you know, they're, they're a great team to work with and they're super innovative. So trying to keep up with them sometimes is a bit of a handheld, but we, we do our best. And then we have the partnership that I re referenced earlier for um, broadband investment by, by Whiteman. Next slide. So communications itself, our first Facebook Live was a Remembrance Day that saw more than 4,000 views. They took the lead on content development, working with the teams for the website. They updated footsteps from our past. They increased the news releases by more than 50% in 2020. And part of that was related to ensuring that the public received timely and relevant information about the pandemic. Uh, the thing with news releases is you want them to be meaningful or eventually people start stop listing, but, but certainly these ones we, we understand have, have hit the mark. There's been increasing information to staff because that's always an area that needs to be improved. Communications had worked with um, infrastructure services to move transit advertising and in November we've had the bus shelters fully booked and the exterior buses fully booked on three buses. So that is representing an increase in revenue over the previous year and we're, we will continue to work on the advertising RFP. Um, the new, there's new tree sculptures, the social media accounts grew and then there was an, an entire set of videos produced in 2020. The mayor took a leadership role sending out mayor's messages weekly to the community on the pandemic, set up various coffee chats on timely topics and then there was also certainly the, the council members gratitude series, which was an awesome opportunity for, for councils to individually thank the various essential service workers. Next slide. I think I've covered some of this. So clearly we heard you on you want more communications. We've got another slide. We talk about updating the, the 2020 budget uh, document design, building on the work of 2020. The emergency responder banner program for children, then that was for headwaters to, to pump up some spirits over there and then supporting a lot of the things that have been done across the town um, that are offered by other departments is really the heart of what communications is about. So, Your Worship, if we get into the safe and healthy communities and neighborhoods, uh, OPS to OPP transition, uh, installation of pedestrian uh, crosswalk in Elizabeth Street at uh, Louisa Street, traffic calming and safety uh, that we're working on and will bring forward, groundwork to move to fire station development, trailhead signs are being installed, digital uh, radon detectors now available to be borrowed at the library, kudos to the library, and development of a, a uh, crossing guard handbook to keep our crossing guards safe and of course are, are people that are using crossing guards. Sustainability initiatives. There was a climate ad adaptation plan, a water conservation plan, the LED light, lightings and common areas of Tony Rose Memorial, Memorial Sports Center, the middle roof of the SVCA. Again, we had a backyard uh, hens pilot program that's going, uh, the B City designation, Cycle Orangeville, uh, we've looked at community tree planting events, the community gardens, and naturalization of park spaces. Mr. Osmond, would you like to speak to the increased tourism 
and culture. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Brennan. Absolutely, we uh, we've been uh, spending a lot of time on do the tourism strategy and action plan. Uh, I'll give kudos to our manager, uh, Rue Phillips, who's been working diligently to finish this project off. And the consultants are now, uh, got, like I said earlier, the final document is complete and we're now reviewing and just making sure everything is tweaked that needs to be tweaked. And that project is bringing forward a lot of great recommendations to move uh, Orangeville forward in terms of the uh, tourism strategy into uh, the downtown and all over the various areas of, of the community. And despite the pandemic, of course, there's high levels of public engagement. We had great turnouts in all the workshops and the stakeholders had, had wonderful input and worked out really well uh, through the virtual, uh, virtual means and mediums. The uh, Arts and Culture Awards were delivered virtually for the first time and the viewership was up 212 represented approximately 112 percent over 2019 but because people got the opportunity to watch online and and, and work online and uh, we had a new four season visitor guide created and published in uh, in 2020 and that's uh, ready to be used and the new tree sculptures that was uh, referred to uh, by miss mckinney and they're on site on broadway so they're uh, quite quite attractive the, uh, I can jump into the recreation master plan. Of course, we've been uh, doing a lot of work on this gearing, gearing up and 2020 has not been uh, kind to us in this regard because we've had a hold off on some things. Uh, but we're, we've completed the plan, of course, and there's lots of recommendations that you'll see some coming forward during the budget process and others. Uh, we're now working on the, uh, the tender documents for the expansion of the uh, lap pool at Alder and the other liner in the leisure pool and some other amenities in the pool area is coming along quite well. The drive-in movie nights were very, very successful uh, at Alder parking lot. Summer concert series at Rotary Park was again uh, well attended and, uh, and quite exciting to, to watch and I know many residents enjoyed it. All the, uh, the all day lights extravaganza, if you uh, go through town, uh, getting a lot of great feedback from not just residents but visitors that have drove through and uh, sent uh, emails and, and texts back and, and on our Facebook uh, saying how attractive the downtown area is. And of course, our major facilities. Uh, we reintroduced, relaunched a lot of our programs uh, with a lot of protocols. And I got to give uh, uh, a, a good shout out to uh, not just our own staff, but also the volunteer staff at, with minor hockey and girls hockey uh, and the figure skating program. And of course, the, of course, the, uh, the gymnastics club, we're doing some fantastic work, particularly at Alder and Tony Rose. And the protocols are very stringent and, and they're very uh, difficult to work within. But I got to say, they're doing a fantastic job. And of course, our virtual Canada Day event went off well, and uh, we celebrated Canada in a big way. The uh, downtown revitalization on Broadway. Um, I leave this one. Probably Doug might want to, or Mr. Jones might want to speak to the first one. Um, sure. Thanks, Ray. Um, the Boulevard brick replacement was a 2020 capital project that was uh, approved by council. Um, we have hired a consultant to move forward with that and we do plan on moving forward with the construction work in 2021. Um, number of challenges with trying to move it ahead in 2020, the, not the least of which was trying to engage in public consultation um, and also the concerns with timing. Um, on a regular year, timing work on Broadway is tricky to try and ensure that we don't impact any of the, the summer festivals downtown. Uh, in a pandemic year, um, it would have been uh, just about impossible. Um, so that'll be moving ahead in 2021. And perhaps, Ray, you want to speak to the next one? Thank you. <clears throat> so we, we, of course, uh, brought the final report uh, into Council some uh, some weeks ago uh, on the 82 and 90 Broadway project. And uh, again, it was uh, it was well received. I think we've got our we've got our direction to go forward and we're working on those things right now. Uh, and again, Ms. Phillips is uh, going, going about her work and preparing things going forward into 2021. Uh, and we also uh, worked on the, uh, with, with Public Works and others, the uh, infrastructure and others, we worked on the Outdoor Boulevard Cafe and display and release bylaws. Uh, and of course, with the clerk's office, that was a collaboration. I don't know if the clerk wants to speak to it. Uh, we also did a digital Main Street program, which is ongoing. We've had two two grants for that. We have one forty thousand dollar initial grant, and then we had a second one. Uh, we got uh, in August to uh, to again do more digitization in our uh, business area and to support business and local entrepreneurs. And that program is uh, going well and being administered, of course, through our uh, our economic development office and and again partnering with the BIA. 
And uh, again, the film shoot uh, in the downtown Mill Street and on Broadway uh, went really well. It, it brings some extra revenue into the BIA and uh, a source, of course, into the downtown and was well received. Very, very professional uh, group of people to work with. And uh, it was great to have uh, Orangeville put on the map in that regard and we'll hope they come back again. Next slide. So again, uh, to continue on, thank you, Mr. Osmond. Welcoming an inclusive and accessible community, uh, equity, diversity, and inclusive uh, inclusion initiatives have been brought forward to town, uh, looking at a diversity and inclusion committee, and actually a, a number of training uh, for all of town staff and members of council. Uh, we brought forward with a motion from Deputy Mayor uh, the, and uh, being passed and supported by Council. The COVID uh, Community Recognition Awards have been launched. The library and uh, recreation programs and services available for all ages, accessibility uh, committee initiatives, and adop adoption of the International Association of Public uh, Participation Framework work for public engagement for Council. Uh, so we get back to the attraction and retain businesses and uh, investment. Uh, again, Mr. Osmond, do you want to speak to this one? I think I've covered some of these off, but just a few highlights. Uh, you know, again, the uh, the economic outlook breakfast was well received uh, and went really well. Uh, our our economic development culture office is uh, is doing some fantastic work, and uh, they've been uh, doing a lot of work. Uh, to uh, to acquire funding through various sources, particularly through the provincial government, uh, to support the uh, local business and entrepreneurs. Uh, there's been a lot of increase, a, a major increase in communication with business community. Again, working with communications and with the uh, corporate off corporate services people uh, to get more things, more messages out to local business and the business uh, feedback is quite positive. As you know, you council senior, you know earlier council meetings. We brought in feedback from our surveys and what they uh, thought about the uh, relaunch of a lot of programs and services in the business community. And that continues to today. And we're getting a lot of uh, online attractive, uh, a lot of online uh, business happening uh, through our office. Uh, the BDAC role, uh, again, the uh, that committee is working uh, diligently and doing great work. They just finished their work plan for 21. Uh, quite an exciting plan for 21. And, uh, and again, they're a very cohesive group. Uh, doing some great work. Uh, buy local initiatives are launched and ongoing in local regional level, uh, which we adjusted. Uh, of course, we worked as well with the BIA to uh, to work with their farmers market uh, in in 20, 2020, and uh, that continues on today. And and as uh, Ms. McKinney alluded to earlier, we had the partnership established for the broadband investment with Whiteman, and again, a tremendous project, uh, large uh, 50, 50 plus million dollars of. Uh, of working in the community. Now, we just uh, expand on that from the Economic Development uh, Office, like a 15% increase between January and September uh, of inquiries to the office, uh, 28 workshops and educational events uh, delivered to over 745 entrepreneurs. So some great work going on with our economic development uh, team. Focus on efficiencies, ranked ballots, uh, we done the model review. We looked at the police transition, ongoing digital transformation, and redeployment of staff to other divisions. As you all recall, when we got into COVID and we had to shut down our recreation centers and our libraries, uh, unfortunately, we had to lay off uh, a number of staff. Uh, we did take the opportunity to re redeploy some staff, and uh, it's returned on some great, uh, great accomplishments for our for our town and our departments and divisions. Moving forward for 2021-22, priorities that are core service delivery. And what I want to look at here, members of council, is that some of these, these items are things that we need to keep focus on, and they're just not a project that we achieve in one year and then we move on from it. But it's something uh, in building that foundation that we need to support our growth going forward. So items like financial and assessment uh, management, is, it's a must as we go forward. The communications and digital transformation, as you've seen, there's been a, a big move in our in the enhanced communications and digital transformation. I need 
everyone to understand that it's going to take a lot of work to maintain that level and to increase that level of uh, enhancements as we go forward. Infrastructure delivery of capital projects in an infrastructure world, we have to clear the backlog and keep up with the spending and completion of capital projects going forward so that we uh, maintain our assets to a responsible level. And the implementation of the recreation and parks master plan. Again, certain areas in recreation and some of that in library services and their community services has taken a large hit during the uh, COVID pandemic. It is going to take some work to rebuild those programs and get them back to the levels that we have seen pre COVID. So on the horizon, what are the outstanding initiatives that we uh, that are to be completed? Like what are the what's to come? We have a thing called the community improvement plan that uh, I know we have spoke about with council before. Uh, what are the planning opportunities in, a, in a, a CIP that can help us shape our future and that of the town of Orangeville? It's like looking at a big puzzle and how do we put these puzzles together to identify what it is that we are exactly looking at? And that becomes a part of the role of council as you see your vision and you set your priorities and your goals for the remainder of this term. Work to rebuild those programs. If we look at the community improvement plans and benefits, again, it en enables us to provide uh, some things at the capacity of council. It's, uh, it's a plan that we can work under the Planning Act and uh, to help us recognize where we want to go. So this is something that we're going to bring forward to council uh, during the budget presentation. Mr. Osmond, uh, do you want to speak to it any further before we move on? You're muted, Mr. Osmond. Did trip back. I'm sorry about that. Again, yes, uh, it's it's a, a planning document, and it's a, a document that would be will we'll bring it forward during the budget process. It uh, it really focuses on the uh, on on planning for not just the downtown, but our industrial area as well, and all the buildings, municipal incentive uh, programs, those kinds of things. Uh, you also look at uh, the ways municipalities can operate in terms of uh, how they uh, lease or dispose of land and buildings and uh, community for community improvement purposes. If I could go to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, there's a uh, the remediation and redevelopment of industrial buildings and plazas within industrial park uh, is, is a good example that CIP takes a good look at. And what kinds of incentives we could look at, grants and incentives that Council can consider, uh, development charges grants, just a few ideas, tax base grants for redevelopment, percentage or set amount uh, reductions, uh, planning and building permit fee reductions, uh, waive or reduce fees uh, for certain matters. Again, to, to create incentives for, for developers and, and the business community to take a look at Orangeville as a place to do great business or develop uh, their, their, build, their, their industry or their commercial areas. Uh, Brownfield redevelopment grants, grants are equal to portions of costs of certain work. Uh, again, to try to stimulate the, the economy and we're going to need a lot of that going forward in the uh, post COVID uh, days. Next slide, please. Just uh, I wanted to bring attention to Council in this regard is that the CIP will also look at and bring uh, forward uh, again uh, attention to things like we've already discussed in our tourism strategy and our recreation master plan. The idea that we should look at things like 82 and 90 Broadway and the Alexandra Park, uh, or you develop the uh, precinct, if you would, downtown, uh, that really involves a uh, redevelopment of the downtown for uh, gathering places, places for the public to have things like farmer's market, entertainment, those kinds of things. And how you would bring uh, the uh, kind of the cohesiveness of the community in, in, in the central part of downtown, where the building is 8290 Broadway building we, we put on the council table, as well as Andre Alexandra Park. What is the future of that park? Uh, CIP will acknowledge it, CIP will speak to it, uh, but again you have two studies or two uh, two projects that have already spoken to that those particular uh, items and Council is moving forward on some of those. So again uh, the CIP it really offers Council another tool to uh, to uh, to achieve its goals and its visions that it may want to uh, focus on going forward. 
So again, we're, we're getting to uh, the end of the presentation and as council soon will start considering the priorities or reviewing the priorities it has set and considering the priorities for the next two years of your term, there's a few things that we think council should consider. The achievability, can we uh, do it? And what does it take to get done? The affordability, can we afford this goal, this objective? Is it a must do, a should do, or is it a nice to have? If it's a must do, are we prepared to stop doing or to delay another initiative that council may have had? Again, we have a limited resource, but you know we want to be able to focus and achieve the priorities and the goals of council, but we have to make sure that they are achievable. So again, we look at the priorities for 2021 to 2022. We should discuss what the existing priorities are. Do they still resonate with members of council or council as a whole? Is there a specific item or project that could be addressed in the priorities or in a CIP coming up uh, if council approves it in the 2021 budget? Is there anything that must be added or reprioritize? What resources would it require? The implications of its changes? Is there anything that can be removed from your list? And then other considerations, existing work that is to be completed. And there must be a focus to ensure that we can meet the results that you would want. So your worship and members of council, I would say hopefully from this quick overview and a high level overview, you can see that's been a lot of work and a lot of accomplishments from, uh, from staff. From that, I want to thank you for your support and your guidance throughout the year. And I also want to say a big kudos to our leadership team, the management team, and indeed every employee at the town of Orangeville. Your performance over this past year and during the COVID uh, scenario and pandemic has been nothing short but stellar. Uh, you should be proud of yourselves and I thank you for all that you have done. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Brennan. I think on, on behalf of town council and all the residents of Orangeville, we do want to thank our town staff for uh, the work that has been done uh, in a very difficult year. Uh, a lot has been accomplished as you just laid out and we uh, much appreciate it. Councillor, does anybody wish to uh, comment? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Andrews. Thank you very much, Your Worship, and uh, to Mr. Brennan and the rest of the general managers and the entire town staff. Uh, there's a theme here, a uh, theme of commitment, perseverance, dedication. Uh, it has been exceptional. Uh, I think that the list of, of accomplishments uh, that have been presented to uh, Council this evening, um, as you've indicated, Mr. Brennan, it's high level, but uh, it's high standards and high accomplishments. Uh, so proud of uh, the announcement that Ms. McKinney has uh, provided to uh, the community this evening. Um, this is the Academy Award of the Marketing Initiatives uh, and when a town of our size is recognized uh, around the world as it has been with the, the Marcom Award, that is quite prestigious and, and it has to be of course recognized for the efforts of the, the department and everyone who's been involved. You know, the COVID response, um, you know, I am proud just being one of those that have been a part of the response, but it really is the uh, the efforts of the, the staff and, and your leadership, Mr. Brennan, and that of the mayor and the rest of the council who have been just exceptional. But the, the amount of time and effort that has been put in by the staff has been uh, just unbelievable. Uh, and I'm also very proud to hear about the business community. Uh, I was going to share this uh, in other business, but since it doesn't happen to be in the uh, in the agenda, but a comment that I wanted to make uh, as we assembled some of the business leaders uh, this past week at the BDAC uh, uh, committee uh, meeting, there's enormous positivity despite the fact that we do have a lot of stress in our business community. It was wonderful to hear uh, about the positivity for not only 2020, but more importantly, what they're looking ahead for in 2021. And uh, again, uh, Mr. Uh, Osmond had uh, mentioned about uh, some great things happening from EDC and the Economic Development Office there. So uh, I want to, of course, pass on some things to uh, my fellow councillors who uh, no doubt want to wave the flag, but uh, I just wanted to say thank you. Deputy Mayor McIntosh. 
Thank you, Worship. I also wanted to thank staff for the great job. Um, I know we're not over it yet, probably have a long way to go, but it's, it's great to see this council working together. We may not always agree, but I think we're working together for the, <coughs> excuse me, for the uh, benefit of the taxpayer. And I think we need to continue the financial stability that was uh, number one priority in our list. And I think that needs to continue on for 2021. Thank you. Very good, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councilor Taylor. Sorry, thank you, Your Worship. I was just curious on the one slide uh, through you, Your Worship, to Mr. Brennan. Uh, it talked about the acquisition of property and, and whatnot. And I'm, I'm just wondering if you could expand on that and the purposes and, you know, if there's things you can share there um, just to give some more detail behind that slide in particular, I'd, I'd be interested. Councillor Taylor, do you, uh, can you remember which slide? Mm -hmm. It was literally four slides ago, maybe it was uh, it talked about that uh, the town would acquire um, different assets. OK, I'm going back here and. Uh, it's OK, I don't mean to put you on the spot if it's if it's not a good time, maybe we can just cover it off another. I certainly can. Uh, I, I just want to make sure I have the right slide on which one I'm, I'm focusing on. One of those would be a potential acquisition. Yeah. The two big acquisitions that I would see right now is the the lands we've talked about for a a, a fire hall, uh, as you've known, and of course uh, from our pull and well, and we've been working on on that for a couple of years. The deal is done, but we still have to transfer the land to the town of Orangeville. Uh, I will I will go back to the slides as we're talking, and if I find the right one, I will certainly speak to it further. I think Miss McKinney has maybe she's found it for me. Mm -hmm. right um, Mr. Brennan, can you hear me OK? I can now, yes. Excellent. I think the counselor is likely referring to the community improvement plan slide where it references the opportunity that would come with the uh, bringing a community improvement plan forward. If you just want to look back, I think it's on um, slide 52. Uh, it, there's 60 slides here. I'm surprised you don't know exactly which one. Shame on you. <laughs> no, and I know some of uh, Mr. Brennan's intro was was cut off, or at least it was for me. But with the puzzle pieces, what the, what part of his narrative was? When you've just got a bunch of puzzle pieces and you don't have that vision, you don't necessarily get things done. And bringing together a community improvement plan, which is budgeted in the process will give council an opportunity to set some priorities on how they want to do some redevelopment. Some of the opportunities that would come with a CIP and one of those slides was related to land acquisition and disposal. You, did you find it? Yes, I did on um, slide 51. I'm sorry. Yeah, so that that's exactly <laughs> as Ms. McKinney just said, like under the CIP, it, it gives a uh, since you, once you have the CIP, that policy and stuff is in play and it gives the, the town and municipality some more flexibility in acquiring lands or leasing or, or dis, uh, disposition of lands. So again, it's just uh, more tools that you can have to achieve the goals that you envision to a, to a CIP. Okay. And I, and Mr. Taylor, uh, Councillor Taylor, I do apologize. I've been having some technical difficulties here, so uh, hopefully we did not lose too much of the presentations and uh, the commentary that went with it. Uh, it was a great presentation, Mr. Brennan. Thank you. Thank you for answering my question and, and for the night. I appreciate it. You're more than welcome. Okay. Councillors, any, uh, any further comments or questions of uh, Mr. Brennan's presentation? Seeing none. I just wanted to make one comment that, you know, one of the things that uh, has been put in front of council is uh, health and safety. And I know uh, following council's decision on reduction of uh, speed limits, there's a number of other things that I think we need to address going forward from uh, a vision zero uh, a potential strategic plan. You know, for those who don't know what vision zero is, it's to reduce deaths caused by vehicular accidents in your town. And I think everybody's on board with that. Other municipalities have adopted it. So I don't know if, if that 
strategic plan is uh, maybe can be rolled into the larger safety issues that we see around uh, pedestrian cycling and, and vehicular, but things like uh, identifying additional community safety zones. I know councillors uh, Taylor Post and Peters have put forward uh, a motion where there was one um, uh, community safety zone identified. I'm sure there's others in town. Things like implementation of safety cameras, some physical changes that can happen like raised intersection, raised crosswalks, things that we can embed in our uh, maybe our asset management as we as we go forward, but they're they help with uh, uh, I guess traffic calming. So there's a number of those issues that I think uh, we'd already started down that path with perhaps a uh, um, uh, a safety consultant, and I think we need to move move down that and uh, maybe by having the consultant come back to to uh, council at some time in the future, it wouldn't uh, further. Uh, uh, you know, cause uh, staff uh, time, we could probably uh, identify uh, a lot of that, those issues uh, through through consultation. But I think that's just one thing. And again, Councillor Taylor brought up the question about real estate, you know, portfolio and acquisition. We, we are talking about all that. We do have some assets. We need to identify those and maybe uh, look at how we, we might reallocate those resources in other ways to to start some of the other plans, including the Parks and Recreation Master Plan, downtown revitalization, and other things where we can move some of those assets into other areas that uh, the residents want us to move towards. So those are just a couple of points I wanted to make. I know we've got additional work to do on our strategic plan uh, in the next uh, day or so. So uh, I'll end my comment there. Any, any further from councillors before we move on? Okay, great. So thank you, Mr. Brennan and uh, the senior manager team for that presentation. It was uh, very comprehensive and it did point out to those watching and uh, uh, our residents how much work did get accomplished in 2020. It really was a bellwether year for Orangeville. Uh, despite the COVID issues, there was a lot of significant things that happened in Orangeville. So thank you again for everybody's, uh, all staff uh, participation in that. Uh, do we have anybody on the line for question period, Mr. Bonanno? There are no, uh, nobody. So at this point, we have um, a no. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Brandon, go ahead, sir. Yeah. Your Worship, uh, before, before we proceed, I would like to uh, first get council's uh, okay or concurrence or agreement. Uh, from your priorities that you set in 2019, is that do that? Do they still resonate with you? Uh, is that where council want us to focus going ahead in 2021 and 22? And is there or are there other items that you want us to focus on? Is there the new to do list or new goals that you want us to focus from a collective uh, council? Well, I'll speak from my, my, my personal opinion. We've got a lot on our table, uh, on the table already. For instance, the downtown revitalization, which I'd love to see move forward. Um, and what I just spoke to about safety. I mean, it, it's very clear that this council is very concerned about vehicular uh, incidents and safety in our town. Um, and I think, but that's already been spoken to, I think, to some extent. So I think it's, Basically, we're, we're moving ahead with a lot of the initiatives that have already been started and uh, looking forward to completing those. I, I don't know if councillors have any specific items that uh, they wish to add. Councillor Taylor and then Councillor Peters. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. I appreciate that. I, I I think uh, I think we're absolutely on the right path tonight in terms of the things that uh, we talked about. And it's funny when you lay a great strategy out, um, it typically doesn't change. Right, the initiatives with inside the strategy and perhaps the odd tactic might be revised over time. But the reality is like, for me, I, I think we all made a pact with uh, those that entrusted us to sit in these seats. Uh, and there, there are two things for me, and they were that we would uh, manage the public purse in, uh, in a fashion that, uh, you know, 
essentially it's our own money and we'll do so responsibly. And I, I think we've done that for the most part. Sure, we've had some disagreements, but on balance, we've collectively done that. And number two, which you didn't mention, Your Worship, was um, the public clearly wanted us to behave in a different fashion. And I think that this group has collectively done that. And again, we don't sit here and play lovey-dovey and pretend that we get along with each other uh, all the time, and that's just fine, but it's done so in a respectful fashion. Um, and I think that's incredibly important. And then I really like uh, where we're going with the safety initiatives. Back again, we don't always agree, um, but for the most part, we're coming from the same place, which is that we wanna make our town a safer place. And then the last piece is this uh, capital expansion and uh, you know for the betterment of the town and uh capital um you know preserving of the capital investments that we have now would be kind of the, the two-prong approach to the last piece and I, I think as long as we're doing those things for me uh, I'm, I'm sure there's an environmental slant in there that i'm missing if we're doing those things for me in the last two years um this is going to be a very successful term for all of us so i, I think we're absolutely on the right path and I appreciate your comments, Mr. Brennan, and 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 your worship. Uh, I think you both did a really nice job there, summing up where we were. So thank you. Great, thank you, Councilor Chair. Councilor Peters. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Through you, just my two cents on the issue. I mean, I think again the priorities we set are still very relevant. Um, we've tackled some with more vigor than others, depending on opportunity and and funding and that kind of thing. So, um, I guess my you know my thoughts to you mr brennan are the ones that we've sort of tackled and are, are bringing into everyday operations let's maintain those and uh and we can push a little harder on some of the ones that that we didn't uh push quite as hard on in in 2020 um and you know that said obviously everyone was throwing a big curveball and i uh, very much appreciate all the work that you and staff have done over this past year and i'd like to keep the priorities basically where they are and and try and get out from under this uh, backlog that that COVID and other factors have really, uh, you know, piled on us. Pretty good. Thank you. Hey, uh, any other counselors? Mr. Mr. Brennan, go ahead, sir. Worship, I, I just want to speak, uh, maybe Mr. Jones can input. Uh, I think there is a consensus from council for the safety, uh, our community safety and stuff. I know there is a, uh, we're going out for an RFP for consultant for traffic calming and stuff. Mr. Jones, is there an opportunity to increase that uh, with some of the items that the mayor and council has alluded to on the safety community protocols? Thank you, Mr. Brennan. Yes, there is. Um, certainly, I think that if, if safety is a big priority for this council, then the traffic calming uh, policy and study that we were looking at doing can be expanded to include things such as Vision Zero and such as both pedestrian and cyclist safety. Um, these are all things that can be rolled into it. Uh, there, there will no doubt be some budgetary impacts for that, but it's certainly something that would provide us with uh, a master document that we could follow to do everything that we can to make our roads a safe place for all. I'd like to see maybe a five-year plan from a, a consultation report that uh, we can roll out those measures uh, through our budgetary process and. Uh, you know, prioritize issues, but something like that. Yes, Mr. Brennan. Your Worship, thank you very much. Uh, and for the downtown revitalization, I will talk with staff and as we present our 2021 budget, uh, and again, the multi-year budget, we will try to focus on it as well and council can give direction at that time, uh, be it a, a downtown park or other measures of revitalization of our downtown core. So I think that will be great. Uh, my only ask of council is when we start going into these programs and setting the priorities, uh, you know, with a lot of changes and a lot of the nuance that we're, we're not focused on, I think to get back to that puzzle, we're trying to put the pieces together. And I think uh, going for the next couple of years is be important for us to focus on the pieces we're putting in that puzzle and the picture that we want to create as we go forward so that we maintain focused and maintain on the road to the goals that uh, council set for us. Very good. Yeah, I think um, things like the downtown revitalization again, you know, maybe we need uh, some additional assistance from specialists in those areas, whether it be landscape architects or streetscape, you know, 
uh, consultants that can help guide us and put put a plan, maybe a multi-year plan together that uh, can fit into our budget uh, as we go forward. All right. Um, any any other comments, counselors, at this moment? So I guess, uh, Mr. Brandon, what you're looking for is a motion from council uh, to stay the course, more or less. Uh, the strategic priorities that we provided to you last year have been worked on. There's more work to be done. Um, things like uh, the safety of our town, the uh, continual work on that is important to uh, this council. And uh, things like realigning maybe a real estate portfolio is something that we can look at uh, and, and provide additional resources to implement some of these plans that we uh, will, will be un unfolding for us in the next year or two. So I, I, is that what you want, uh, Mr. Brennan? We just, uh, so council, maybe if, if we could have a motion here to uh, direct Mr. Brennan and staff to uh, carry on with the current strategic priorities that were developed by, by council. Um, and uh, we can always revisit this next year, but for the time being, we, uh, we need to direct staff. Mr. Taylor, you're wishing to make that motion. Uh, Deputy Mayor McIntosh has seconded. Any further comments from councilors before we vote on this? Seeing none, all in favor? Yes. All right, there you go, Mr. Brennan, thank you. Um, so we have a, a motion here. This is a notice of motion at meeting from uh, Councillor Peters. So those of you who are, uh, have been watching the news the last week or two realize that uh, the provincial government has introduced a bill uh, 229 and in particular a schedule uh, attached to this omnibus bill that uh, uh, puts, uh, takes some power away from the conservation authorities and puts it into uh, minister's hands. And there's been a great deal of concern by conservation authorities and municipalities around the province. So, uh, Councillor Peters would like to introduce this motion at this meeting and also ask uh, councillors to waive procedure so that we can approve this and get it in as um, correspondence into the province before they vote on this, which is coming up this Thursday on the 7th of the 10th. So, that's the reason for the special consideration tonight. And Councilor Peters, if, if you'd like, I can read this quickly now, if, uh, if you don't mind. Certainly. And introduce it into our council meeting. So this is, uh, Councilor Sherwood, did you want to inter interject there? Go right ahead. Is the motion supposed to be in our council agenda or are we just being told of it now? Just being told, it just, it, it happened today and there was some back and forth with town clerk, with Councillor Peters and myself, and we've just really, in the midst of the meeting, actually come to the <laughs> to the decision that it needed to happen today because of the timing of the December the 10th vote at the provincial legislature. So um, we'd like to introduce you. Councillor Peters. Do you want to speak to this? Go yeah. Ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Through you, if I could just add, this was the notice of motion that I gave last meeting. Um, but given that our next sort of regularly scheduled meeting is until next week and it's currently in its third reading with an anticipated vote this week, um, it was introduced in concept, let's say, um, a week or two ago. But uh, again, given the timing, that's why uh, we're asking to sort of waive privilege and get this through. Right. Councilor Taylor. You're, you're muted, sir. Technology. Thank you, sir. Uh, through you to Councillor Peters, is this the same uh, area where uh, six or eight of the members have resigned today? Is this yes. the same story, just so we have clarity? Yes, yes, yes. and the language is um, uh, very much the same as other municipalities, uh, Mono, Halton, Peel, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yes, the six members plus the chair of the Greenbelt Council, which is supposed to be a provincial committee, advisory committee, um, have all resigned in protest over the changes that are anticipated as part of this bill. Um, so yes, it's it's very much uh, in the news currently and uh, because of the impacts that it has on our relationship with CBC, that was the impetus for, for getting the language in front of you. Um, what, yeah, go ahead, Councillor Sherwood. 
Um, so, Councillor Peters, can can you remind me again, please? You said something's being voted on in the House this week. The uh, yes, Mr. Three, Mr. Mayor, uh, it's currently in its third reading, and the anticipated vote on that third reading for a royal ascent would be this week. Although it's impossible to say because the debate could be very short or or very lengthy. But given that it's at third reading, the majority of the debate is likely already occurred, and it's anticipated that the final vote will occur this week. All right, so um, we need to pass a motion to agree to deal with this issue tonight. So if I could have a motion from Council, Council Peters, do you want to make that motion? Okay, uh, we need a seconder, Deputy Mayor McIntosh, I see. Okay, all in favor? Okay, very good. So one of the things, I, I did have a conversation today with Councillor Peters and I, I know, I, I sense that there's some, uh, and, and I think this is probably where some of the, the developers have got to Premier Ford on this, and that is um, the time with which CDC's response responds to um, applications. And I know I've heard it both with municipal staff and with private enterprise and sometimes <clears throat> the time with which they deal with things isn't you know reasonable and you know I think what when I as I read through this motion from Councillor Peters there was in fact some conversations going on between the province and conservation authorities about that so I that that was the only thing that I would like somehow was, was the conservation authorities to to have some guideline that they can that they can stick to with respect and whether it takes a year for them to respond or six months for them to respond but some guideline that, that developers and municipal staff can understand when they can expect to receive uh, reports back from conservation authorities and you know I, I would hope Councilor Peters you're a representative on, on the local conservation authority and I, I hope you could you know, put that message through that that's the only frustration I think that people see. We want our environment to be protected. We want our flood mitigation to be part of our development process and all of these things, the good things that conservation authorities were created. And, uh, but timelines are frustrating for a lot of people. So I just wanted to put that out there and I, I fully support what Council Peters is doing, but I hope that the conservation authorities can work on that, that one uh, issue that seems to be an aggravation to a lot of people. So let me read this. Um, this is a uh, proposed um, motion from Councilor Peters. Whereas the province has introduced Bill 229, Protect, Support and Recover from COVID-19 Act, Schedule 6 regarding Conservation Authorities Act. And whereas the legislation introduced several changes and new sections that could remove and or significantly hinder Conservation Authorities' role in regulating development permit appeal process and engaging in review and appealing of planning applications. And whereas we rely on the watershed expertise provided by local conservation authorities to protect residents, property and local natural resources on a watershed basis by regulating development and engaging in reviews of applications submitted under the Planning Act. And whereas the changes allow the minister to make decisions without conservation authority watershed data and expertise. And whereas the legislation suggests the minister will have the ability to establish standards and requirements for non-mandatory programs which are negotiated between the conservation authorities and municipalities to meet local water set needs and whereas the budget that Orangeville spends on conservation authority work is a bargain for the services provided and whereas municipalities believe that the appointment of municipal representatives on conservation authority boards should be a municipal decision and the chair and vice chair of the Conservation Authority Board should be duly elected. And whereas it has been the town of Warner's experience with the Credit Valley Conservation Authority, that having a chair or vice chair serve for more than one year has produced experienced individuals. And whereas the changes to the duty of members predict, contradicts the fiduciary duty of the Conservation Authority Board member to represent the best interests of the Conservation Authority and its responsibility to the watershed. And whereas conservation authorities have already been working with the province, development sector, and municipalities to streamline 
and speed up permitting and planning approvals through conservation Ontario's client services streamlining initiative. And whereas municipalities value and rely on the natural habitats and water resources within conservation authority jurisdictions for the health and well-being of residents, municipalities value conservation authorities' work to prevent and manage the impacts of flooding and other natural hazards, and municipalities value conservation authorities' work to ensure safe drinking water. Therefore, be it resolved that one, the province of Ontario repeal section six of the Budget Measures Act, Bill 229. And two, that the province continue to work with conservation authorities to find workable solutions to reduce red tape. And that this resolution be circulated to Premier Doug Ford, MPP Sylvia Jones, the Minister of Environment, Conservation Parks, Jeff Urich, the Minister of Finance, Rob Phillips, Credit Valley Conservation and all Ontario municipalities. Okay, so that is Councillor Peter's motion. Uh, I'm prepared to second that motion. Any further comments from the councillors or questions that they might want to ask? Uh, Councillor Sherwood. Um, yes, Your Worship, through you to uh, Councillor Peters. In your distribution, can we uh, not include all conservation authorities rather than just Credit Valley Conservation Authority? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, certainly. Yeah, I, I think it's important everybody knows where municipalities stand on the issue, certainly. Thank right. you. Yeah, you're right, uh, Councillor Sherwood. We, we do in our in our region have Grand Valley Conservation Authority and Ottawa Saga are kind of in our neighborhood as well. So, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so Council Peters, we can add all conservation authorities rather than Credit Valley Concert at the end of this motion. Very good, we'll do that. Sure. Any further comments, Councillor? Councillor Kip. Um, just, just thought I'd look forward to reading Councillor Peters' um, piece. Like, I think you've set the record here tonight, Councillor Peters. That is the longest uh, motion in the history of this council. So, I, I it'd be good to. If I wish we could, I wish I could hold it and read it. But uh, as I listen to it, it uh, it sounds it sounds appropriate, and I understand there's timeline commi commitments here. So, I'll, I'll vote in favor. But I'd still like to hold it and. We will uh, scan this and get it to you uh, immediately following the meeting. I'm sorry for not getting it out sooner. Thank you, Your Worship. But again, time being, being of, of the essence here, uh, we, we needed to drop this into this meeting today. All right, so we have a motion on the floor by Councillor Peters with uh, an amendment from Councillor Sherwood, which Councillor Peters has agreed to. I have uh, seconded this. All in favor? All right, thank you very much. Councillor Peters' motion is passed. And I will, is there something else, Madam Clerk? Uh, yes, you just have to wait three minutes to make sure no one has any questions. Okay, Mayor. we need to wait for three minutes in case somebody wants to call in on this particular uh, issue. I think, um, can we go ahead with some new business and waiting for that? Okay. okay. Um, Councillors, any, any new business anybody would like to comment uh, or bring to the attention of the public right now? Councillor Andrews. And thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, I did echo uh, this comment uh, as part of Mr. Brennan's uh, and his staff's presentation, but uh, just wanted to echo the opportunity to those that might be viewing uh, to shop local. Uh, I know that uh, it is the time of the year where many of us, of course, may be having to modify our uh, holiday plans. And uh, again, what I was very impressed with uh, having uh, many of the business leaders meet last week was their positivity for 2021. But as part of that discussion, uh, the opportunity to emphasize to the community to uh, do what they can to shop local. Very good. Thank you. Councillor Sherwood. Uh, yes, Your Worship. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Andrews, for um, you're sharing that with regards to shopping local. I too am um, very much wanting to push shopping local and just wanted to bring to the attention of uh, people that may be watching this evening that most of the downtown businesses are extending their hours on Thursday and Friday nights and every Friday night there's some entertainment. I um, I was able to enjoy it. I pulled over to the, uh, the side of the road and listened from my car um, listen to Ryan uh, singing just um, 
just last Friday evening. But anyhow, Friday evening, uh, there is some live um, entertainment downtown and hopefully you can take in some uh, entertainment and go have uh, some dinner at one of our restaurants and then uh, buy some gifts along the way. Councilor Stewart, I wonder if you can remind us about the winter market. Uh, we're getting to the end of the season now. Is there is there one more or two more uh, Saturdays when the winter market is on? Sure, you know. I don't. Uh, yes, Your Worship. I don't have the specific calendar rate in front of me, but I believe that it's going to be continuing for a few more months. Um, maybe Mr. Osmond knows specifically, but I thought it was carrying on right into the winter, right. unless uh, we. Can you talk about that, sir? Through your, your worship to uh, Councillor Sherwood and, and Council, yes, it will continue on through the winter. Uh, at this stage, we are uh, monitoring that uh, particular activity until we get into the new year. Uh, just to see how things might change in our terms of our programming because right now as you know you're using the dry floor at the uh, B rink and we uh, we will see how things evolve but at this point it looks like to be going into the new year uh, every second weekend. Very good. I just want to make a couple of statements. Um, some good news happened a couple of weeks ago. The provincial government uh, approved a number of new long-term care facilities including additional beds for Orangeville. The uh, Darlette organization, which runs Avalon, has been uh, given the green light for uh, improvements to, I think it's 169 beds, long-term care beds in Orangeville, uh, which includes, I think it's about 30 additional beds from what they've got right now. Um, this new money that the province is providing is contingent upon facilities new build or that they are upgraded to the current uh, uh, construction standards of long-term care. So, <coughs> pardon me, the, uh, it, it, we're looking forward to uh, Avalon uh, you know, upgrading and adding long-term care beds in our municipality. And I think, you know, this council uh, last year uh, did a, 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 had a motion passed where we reduced the the cost of development charges for long-term care units and uh, certainly would be an incentive that would help this group. And we have continued our correspondence with our local MPP asking for additional uh, influence on uh, long-term bed allocations here in uh, central Dufferin Caledon, which uh, Orange will smack dab in the middle. So it's, it's very good news. Also, just to remind everybody, Theodore Orangeville has got some programming that uh, is available online, and, uh, and our friends at Team Ranch are running uh, an outdoor program there where they've decorated the property. It's $20 for a car to go through. Uh, I haven't been yet, but I will. I understand it's uh, it's very nice. So I just wanted to let people know about that as well. Any other, other new business uh, counselors? Well, we. We, are, we have not received any calls uh, regarding that motion, so we now can move ahead with uh, our bylaws. And this is a recommendation that the bylaw listed below be read three times and finally passed. May have a motion on 14-1. Councillor Sherwood, second by Councillor Post. All in favor? Yes. And a motion to adjourn, please. Councillor Deputy Mayor McIntosh and Councillor Taylor, all in favor? Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.